Version 2 of the Font Clamp Calculator is here, and this is bigger and better than ever before. Those of you that are still a little bit confused by why you would even want to use fluid typography or a font clamp, you can use this in WordPress and other page builders. It's pretty simple, all right? You got your desktop, you got your tablet, you got your mobile. You might set a size of, say, 100 pixel for your desktop font, and you might have like 20 pixel for your mobile. And unless you set sizes for every single breakpoint as you shrink and grow your screen, you're going to see jumps in the sizes. And it doesn't always look great from a user experience. But by adding in some fluid typography and a bit of font clamp, as you shrink and grow, the font will do that as well, like a sliding scale. And what makes it really versatile is that you don't have to set loads of different sizes for all of the different breakpoints. You can get the code from the link in the video description. And all you got to do is copy and paste it into the code snippets plugin that you can get for free from the WordPress repository. This is version 2. And from the looks of it, it's not that different from version 1.2 that we released a few days earlier. But here's the big changes. Originally, we were doing everything within the class tab. Basically, you would go and assign names. So over here, I've got triple X large, extra large, medium, small, extra small, etc. And after you've gone and set your root size, normally 16 is okay, but some other page builders like to use 10. That's your subjective preference. You can leave it at 16 to be extra safe. You go and set your minimum width and your maximum width. So for triple X large, I've said I want the sizes to go from 48 to 64. You get a preview of it over here on the right hand side. When you're on a mobile, your font will not go smaller than 48 pixels. And when you're on a desktop, your font won't go bigger than 64 pixels. So even if you're on a super wide screen monitor, it won't go bigger than 64. But as you shrink down the screen, whether you do it on your desktop or you move over to a laptop or a smaller desktop monitor or a tablet, your font will then change between this range. So as you go to different devices between 375 and 1100, your fonts will scale down, but it will never get smaller than 48 pixel. And for those of you that don't want to use pixel and want to use REM, of course, I would always recommend you use REM. You click the button and it will change the values. What's really cool about this, it doesn't matter what you click at the top. Your formulas below will always be in REM. And at any time, you can go and copy the code for one particular class. For instance, if I click small over here or I click extra large, the value over here will be relevant to what you went and clicked and it highlights it for you as well. Or you could just go and click copy all and it will give you the code for all of them in one code. But here's where version two is so much better. Now in version 1.2, we did introduce a feature which was push to theme. So take these values that I have here at the moment. Let's go and change one of them. Let's change the extra extra large. I've changed the name to super large. And I'm going to say it actually goes up to 10 REM. And look at what it's done over here. Here's something really cool with version 2. As you change the values, whether you use the buttons to increase or decrease, or whether you go and type the value, it will real time change it. And the other neat feature is that we introduced line height as well. So I'm going to change the line height for this to be a 2. And when I hit save, it has only applied 2EM line height for that super large and it's changed the name. And you can see it's gone from 3 to 10 REM. And if I switch back to pixel, because your root HTML is 16, it's going to be 160, 10 times 16 if you get the idea. And don't forget, if you click add size, it will allow you to do that. Go and set your name, go and set your minimum size and your maximum size. If you want to go for 1EM or 1.2EM or have a variation between the different classes, you can do that. But what I'm going to show you is that if I click this button over here and it's going to say, do you want to push it over? And I click OK and I go over to my theme and customize and I click additional CSS. It has now pushed it over here. You didn't have to copy and paste it. It just dumped it in there for you. And look, it's even got super large. And the last thing I want to remind you of before we get onto the really juicy stuff is that you can export a JSON or import as well. So let's say you've gone and modified all of these values. You can go and click export and it will send it over to your downloads folder. And then let's say you open up a brand new website and you've gone, well, I went and set these really funky class names. Like maybe you've got 20 different levels, XXXXX large or something like that. You can now just click import. So you could click import, select your file, and then it will change what you got here. For instance, if I go and hit clear all, they're all now wiped out. Oh my God, what are we going to do? You could just click reset to default and it will bring them all back for you. But let's just clear it all out again. 
And then I'm going to click import JSON and pick that file I just exported. And look, they've all come back again. That's how brilliant this is. So it's pretty versatile in how easy it is to use to make your font so much more scalable. But okay, let's get on to the really juicy stuff with version two. So I've already mentioned the line high that is now there available for you. By default, it's 1.4. You can click it, you can go and change it, and you can have different line heights for different classes. One of the thing I wanna remind you of though is that some people were a little bit unsure about using the scalable classes. When I use the class name triple X large, it doesn't matter if you're a H1, a H2, a H5, or paragraph text. If you stick XXX large into the class name, doesn't matter what page builder or WordPress type tool you're using, it will apply those sizes. So that means that you could have like a page, and on that page, let's say you've got four H2s, but the H2 near the top needs to be more important than a H2 that's further down. What you could then do is just go in and say, right, the H2 at the top is going to be a large and a H2 further down is going to be a medium and another H2 way further down is going to be a small. This just makes it so much more scalable. But a lot of people said we preferred the old way where it wasn't based on a class name. It was actually based on the HTML tags. Fine, let's do that. So at the top now you have a tab and if you click tag, you now have it retro with the HTML tags and look at the code down here. This is kind of what you were used to seeing. And again, you can change your values. It works exactly the same as what we had before. You can add in a tag name. So maybe you wanna go and add in a size, but this time you wanna do it for padding. And I've gone and set the minimum maximum sizes. The line height doesn't matter, it's irrelevant, but don't worry about that. You go and hit save and it's there for you. You can hit push to theme and it will send it over to your theme. Just remember, if you keep pushing it on different tabs, you'll get copies of code. So make sure you've only got one over there. You know, if you've got multiple, go and delete them. It's pretty easy to do. You can export and import. So if you export from this tab and you try to import it to the class tab, it won't work because it won't import it. Nothing will crash. It just won't import it because it has a different structure but you can now go back to the retro style where you were using the H1, H2, H3. Go and set your line height, go and set your minimum size, go and set your maximum size. And again, don't forget, if you go over here and I start to increase the sizes, something like 80, can you see you get the real-time preview over there? Like if I go and set this to be 10, you can now just see how small it is. And don't forget, you can click reset to default. It will take you back to square one. So if you went and added loads of stuff and you wanted to get rid of it, you could do that. So I hope I've satisfied those people that wanted to go retro old school where they don't want to have scalable class names because it's there for you if you want it. But if you want to go back to the old way of doing it with the tags, you can do that. But we have a third tab called scale. What the hell is that? Well, I wanted to go a step further because I thought if we're going to do the tag, let's future proof this a little bit and think about another way of doing it that I know some people like. So you click the scale tab and it takes you over here. And this looks a little bit different. I will point out that you can still push whatever you do here to your theme. Again, you click it and it will send it over there. You can still export and import for this relevant tab. And I do want to point out when it exports it within the file name, it will say class tag or scale. It will say that. So you know that you're importing the right one because you don't want to import and go, oh, was that class or was that scale or was it tag? No, you'll now know it's in the file name. So let me now explain how this works and stay with me on this. It's really simple and easy to understand. All you have to do is set your root size and your minimum and your maximum width. I mean, I've got some default values in there. So when you first use it, it's going to load up with 375 and 1100. If you want to change that in the code snippet, you can do that. But just make sure you do a search because it appears about five or six times within the code. But you can do that. And then what you do is you set the paragraph, the P minimum and maximum size. And then you go and set a scale ratio. So let me just show you what happens if I set my minimum size to be 10 and I set my maximum to be 20. And you get the real time changes. You can increase and decrease it on the fly and you'll see the changes. But look what happens. Can you see the values down here are changing? Let's just pop this back to be 20. What this does is say your baseline for your smallest and maximum size for your paragraph is 10 and 20. Don't go for 10, that's way too small and you're gonna be like breaching all sorts of WCAG 2.1 AA standards. 
But let's say your smallest is 10 and your biggest font for your paragraph is 20. Every heading above, so H6, H5 going all the way to H1, it multiplies your baseline by 1.33. It's up to you, right? I'm not going to tell you what to do, but 1.33 is generally seen as a reasonable ratio. You can go smaller, you can go bigger. You can put it to two. I mean, let me just show you what happens so you understand this better. I'm going to set my scale ratio to be two. And look what's happened to the sizes. Your H6 is now double what P is because it's times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. And now it's gone ridiculously, stupidly big. You can see that on the previews there. If I was to go and set it now to be 1.2, 10 to 12, then 12 times 1.2 is 14.4, times 1.2 is 17.3. And it does it the same for your maximum sizes too. So if I go and set this back to be 133 and I set my minimum to be 16 and I'm going to set my maximum to actually just be 17 because maybe based on your font, because sometimes some fonts look okay with 16 on a desktop. Sometimes 15 is better. Sometimes 18 or 19 is better. But what it now does is scale all of my headings up by 1.33. So if you don't want to mess around with too many different sizes, like you're a little bit unsure, but you know what your paragraph is going to be, by just sticking in a value here, it will scale it for you. And again, the same thing, you know, push the theme, export, import. Copy the particular class. If I go and click H3, there it is there. Or you could just click copy all and it will copy all of them. And if you don't want to use pixel on any of the tabs and you want to use REM, I mean, at the end of the day, the formulas are always going to be in REM, right? But you can do that over here. So we've got the scale tab. We've got the retro tag tab, which I know a lot of you do want to use. We have the class tab as well. This is version two of the font clamp calculator. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. Smash the like button. You got to share this with the world. You got to let people know. I know there are other tools out there. There are websites, there are plugins, there's platforms, there's things out there. But has anyone ever gone to the lengths of getting this done? The answer is yes. Me. See you soon. Bye.